Okay, so let's get started with the making of the album that is very similar to the Mother Goose. So what you're going to need, of course, is your paper cutter. And you're going to need 12 by 12 sheets. I use craft card stock from Hobby Lobby. And the craft card stock, the 12 by 12, you're going to cut it right in half. So we're going to cut it six. And then we're going to cut it by seven inches long. So six, six inches wide by seven inches long. Now, if you cut your seven inches long, this is a extra. Keep this. This is what we're going to use for our flaps. And let's cut another piece seven inches long. Now, I have already made the six page base. These are called base pages. So I'm going to just make two of the pages with you. So you're going to need to cut six. Cut six of the seven inches by six inches papers. Okay, after you cut those six, you'll need to cut, take your cardstock. Sorry, but my camera, here, I have to just bring it back up. Okay, you're going to cut your 12 by 12 in half. So you'll have a six, six inch by 12 inch piece of paper. And I'm having not good luck with my cutter, and I put a new cut, a new wheel in, so let me get a different one. We're going to cut our 12 by 12 by 6. Push a little harder on that new blade. So I have two pieces. I'm going to cut another piece, 6 by 6. So out of one 12 by 12 sheet of paper, you'll be able to get four 6 by 6. You'll need these for the top of your pocket page. So let's go ahead and cut. Okay, you're going to need six of these. Like I said, I have already done the six pocket pages that we'll be working on. As you can see, one side is for your hinge and one side is to put your mats in. So. I'm going to make the first two with you, and then you'll be able to go on and make the other four pages. Next, you'll need your scoring board. And I'm going to bring the camera down so you can see the numbers better. So on your seven inch side, the seven inch side, let's score at one half inch. I just turn mine. It's easier. I just turn it, or you can score it over there at that half inch. I just scored again at the six and a half inch. Okay. Score. Now, score all six of your pages. Half inches on each end. Okay. Now, I'm going to bring the camera back up. Put it where we can... My computer monitor, sorry, keeps shutting off, and then I can't quite see where I'm at on the camera. All right. So on that score mark, let's just fold the score mark. I fold it away from myself. I take the bone folder. Make sure it's down good. Try not to use this sharp edge. If you're using a weaker paper than what I'm using, in the craft card stock, you will rip the fibers and the page will tear. I fold it away. One reason is so then you have that underneath part of the score on the back side. And craft card stock makes really nice pages. They're heavy duty. They really stand the test of time and uh, it's just extremely strong. But you might want to use black cardstock. You can use colored cardstock. The choice is yours. Okay, um, now you're going to have six pieces that look like this. And then you'll take your six by six inch pieces of paper. And they're going to go on top. So I use for this my three eighths of an inch score tape. I love the three eighths, not quite a half of an inch. Fits perfectly, doesn't go over my score line. And you'll just put the tape. Now, if you're using glue, of course, you'll wait to do this step. So let me go ahead and get my score tape all on. Or if you're using your red line tape, that works too. I personally don't use anything but score tape. 
because I know my book is not going to come apart. All right, now let's go ahead and take off, get rid of the razor blade, take off the first score tape. If you're using glue, go ahead now and get your glue down. Then we're going to just match it. Up. And let's turn it around. And again, if you're doing glue, go ahead and get your glue down. And let's make sure it is on the edge. Now, when you're doing this, you're going to say, but my page looks like it's buckling. It is. I'll show you. Got some square tape there, so I'm going to fold it over. I'm going to show you what we're going to do. So as you can see, it kind of it's a, a, has a buckling effect. Take your score. I mean, your... Um, bone folder and just push your paper. You're going to have to be a little bit rough with it and you're going to make it do what you want to do. And once you get your paper on, it's going to just be nice and flat. So let's make another one. Put that one aside. And the same thing if you're doing glue, go ahead and put your glue down. Go ahead and match this up. Now, I'm kind of glad this didn't quite match. This right here, as you can see, is not matching up. So what I'm going to do, it's kind of like the walls in your house when you're doing handmade things. Things don't always get cut perfect. So I'm going to take my my ruler and my box cutter. I don't use the smaller and I'm just going to take that edge off. Okay. And then as you can see, it's going to match up just fine. Okay. So now laid up. Take this one off. And this little tool actually came with my Cricut, and it's wonderful for taking the covers off your score tape or your red line. Okay, we've got that matched up. Push it down. And there you go. So now you need six of these, okay? So after you get all six of yours made, so you might want to go ahead and pause the video. I'm not going to pause it because I... I'm having trouble getting it started. So you now have six pages. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We have the six pages. And if you remember in the Mother Goose album, okay, the first one, and I'm going to have this out so we can refer to it. The first one has the flap. And let me show you this though. This is not um, the, the cardstock. This was just a piece of the paper. You'll cut the paper to measure so you know that your flap is five inches. So you're going to cut it five inches by however long you want, and you're just going to glue it on three sides. Glue it here, glue it there, and glue it on the side. I do glue my pockets because if you use score tape, then your tag is going to get caught up in the tape. So now we know this is five inches wide, and we know it's six inches long. So our first flap is going to be six by six. Okay, so let me set that aside. So we already had some six, you should have had some six inches left over, maybe one or two. So you're going to use your scoreboard a lot, so keep it handy. So on the scoreboard, I always score for my flaps one inch. So go ahead and score at the five. Okay. And fold your flap away from you. And once you get, like I mentioned earlier, making the albums, you're going to be just impressed at how easy it is. So now I take my 3 eighths of an inch score tape right along that line where I scored and then right along the edge. Okay, bone folder. Get that down good and tight. And let's go ahead. Um, you can use glue once again, so just so you know, you can use glue. Now, 
you need one edge that's going to go on to your uh, hinge system and I'll show you how to make that and the second edge is again for your pocket so on your on your left hand side is where your hinge system will be and your pocket will be on the right hand side I turn it to face me because it's easier for me to to line up my flap see we have this flap now and the flap you're going to match it right on that edge and you might have a little glue just wipe it off or tape and again it's off you really can't avoid that when doing paper so I just go ahead and cut it and there is flap number one now this is where if you're going to use magnets you want to put them on now so I would put a magnet here and a magnet there for my closure and then it would be exactly where I need it so now let's turn our page over on oh, that our pocket page now on the back side we also have actually here let me go ahead and use the one I already made let's go ahead and turn it over we have a flap here and then we have a pocket okay so our flap is four inches wide finished so you're going to need a five inch by six inch flap and you should have plenty of leftover pieces if you don't go ahead and cut one from your 12 by 12. so that's six so that one's too big let's see if i've got a five incher here yep there is a five incher so we're going to go ahead and score that at one that's what i like about this album pattern um there's not a lot of scrap paper left over because you're using all of your scraps so let's go ahead and fold that take your bone folder down now this one will be on this opposite side so it's going to be on the hinge side let's go ahead with our three eighths of an inch score tape or glue just remember if you are using glue make sure it's a strong glue and don't 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 put a lot of glue on because if you put a lot of glue on it's just going to make a mess go ahead and get that down now i always look back to make sure i don't put this on the wrong side so now it's going to go on the hinge side so I turn that towards me and I'm going to put that flap down okay now on the inside if you remember we had a pocket so I don't write down my measurements because I don't have actual patterns for my books I kind of make them as I go so this is three inches long now we have some scoring to do on all four inches of this pocket so we're going to want it to be four inches by seven inches so you may have to cut another piece of paper which I'm going to have to because I want it to be seven inches long and I want it to be four inches wide okay scoreboard keep keep this piece you're going to actually use it as a belly band so let's get out our scoreboard now on our little piece here we're going to score it on all three sides let me get my computer screen back up so we're going to score half inch and we're going to turn it we're going to score it again at a half an inch turn it score it at a half inch and let's turn it again and score it at half of an inch okay first fold you're going to make you're going to turn it away from you okay this is this thing can get so you've got a piece that's going to go down we're going to turn our cardstock over the piece that you just folded and you're going to put glue now if you're gluing though 
wait, don't glue yet. Wait till after I get the score taped down. But if you're gluing, maybe make a mark with the pencil that this is your gluing side. Because I'm going to turn this over in order to make our flaps now. Just go ahead and soften your edges. Okay. Now we're going to put the score tape on the opposite side. And again, if you're gluing, do not put any glue down yet. Okay? So we have a few steps. Now, I turn it this way first because I need to somewhat miter my corners. So you'll see I'm starting here and then I turn it just a hair. Okay, now it's easier for me to keep working on this back side because I can see, so let me see, so I'm going to cut it here and I'm going to just go at an angle. Then I'm going to cut it again and go at an angle. So that's what it should look like. Now if you're doing glue, go ahead on the side, this side, and let's go ahead and glue that side. I'm going to take that right off and I'm going to push it down. So you'll want to glue that down. Okay, now you've got a nice finished edge for your pocket. It's not rough, it's not sharp, and you can do this on all your pockets or you don't have to. You'll see I did some where I didn't. So now we've got this side with the tape. Turn it up back over. Let's fold this side up. Okay, fold this piece over and the other end over. Now you can see why we cut it seven inches because we lost, in, we have the inch here and we cut it an inch longer, wider because we need this inch here. Go ahead and take the bottom piece off and then just, or glue it and then just touch your edges over. What this does, there you go, when you adhere it down, see now you have a nice area in there for your tag to fit. You have lots of room. So go ahead and add your glue, if you're gluing again, and let's grab our page that we just now put the flap on. And once again, I turn it to work on. So I have the flap over here, and you're going to put your pocket down. You have a score line. Don't put it right up above the score. Don't put it right on the score line. If you put it on your score line, your page is not going to close nice. So leave just a, about a one eighth of an inch gap. Okay. Now, go ahead and push everything down. Make sure it's good and flat. And with your, oh, with if you're using a magnet, go ahead and get your magnet on. You might even want to put your magnet in a little bit and in on this page so that you're not too close to the edge. Now, you had plenty of the scraps left over for pockets, and I always cut my, my page about half of an inch shorter. So we know our page is six inches. Let me see. So let's go ahead and cut this at five and a half. The reason I'm going five and a half. Actually, I'm going to go five and a half by five and, well, that's already cut, so that would work at five and a quarter. Reason being, if I want to add more pockets, then I'm going to have plenty of room. So let's go ahead and get our, our tag in, lots of room, and you still have lots of room for more. So there's your first, first page, and then your second page. Okay, let's move on to page three. Page three. Page three has these two folds here. Okay, so our first fold is going to be four and a half inches by six. And like I mentioned before, you have plenty of the paper, so just find one that's at least it has to be six inches long. And it has to be four and a half inches wide. The nice thing is these measurements, you can play with them and change them however you like. 
And then the little flap. Let me put this down. This little flap right here. Well, it's we need to cut six inches long and it has to be four inches wide. And that's like I mentioned, I just love this book because there's really no waste. Okay, that is already six inches long. And I'm gonna go with four inches wide. You can make yours wider if you like. Okay, we need our square board. So, the first one that I'm going to score is my four inch paper. This was the four inches wide by six inches long, and I'm scoring it at five. Okay, now this piece, do you remember, it opens this way. So, we have to score on the four, about four and a half to four, it, I, this one I cut four and a quarter, four and a half, it's, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to actually score this one at only three and a half. It's going to have a three quarter inch um, flap here because it is just a hair short. I don't like to go any shorter than that three quarter inch. I like to make sure it's secure on my page. So let's grab page number three. And I'm going to go ahead with the this is the six inch. This is going on the bottom. And then this is the top. And we did that one inch score. You know, it, I'm. it's up to you. I'm just a fan of the bigger scores because, like I said, I want it to be secure on my page. And I do have some tape hanging over, so I'm just going to give it a little snip on the edge. Now, remember, look at your page. Make sure you have an open end to your, your hinge side and an open end for your pockets. I don't know how many times I've put pages on upside down, and it's it doesn't come apart, I promise. But again, I work on mine upside down, so I'm going to turn it this way. Just going to line that up at the top and on the edge, and then I'm going to give it a good. There you go. So our next one, again, I have some tape hanging off, so I'm just going to give it a little snip on the edge. And if you're using glue, go ahead and put your glue down. And let's just line it up right with that bottom edge. Okay, for some reason, I'm, mine is just a hair too long. So I'm going to get my cutter, even with my score tape on there. I think I need to make a little bit of a cut. That's why I invested in this type of a cutter. It has the rotary wheel, wheel and I love it. You can cut through score tape, you can cut through chipboard. Uh, you'll be seeing me cut the chipboard. You can cut through anything and it doesn't ruin your blade as fast. Okay, so now we have page number three. Now on this page, what I did is I had a, a big magnet on here, and then I had a big magnet um, underneath this four inch flap. And so it made it a lot easier for it to adhere through all these pages. Now you can also have your page like this. So see, it's any, it's just however you want to do it. So let's go ahead and turn it over. Now on the back side, this is the page we just made. Now on the back side, this had the top flap. So this one, we're going to cut six by four. So we can have that one inch. And there should be plenty, plenty of scraps. So let's go six inches. And then 
by four. Nope, I think I just told you wrong. Hold on. No, six by four is correct. And these I keep until I'm all finished because you never know where you might want to um, back maybe one of your stickers or just add anything extra to your page. Okay, so let's go ahead with the one inch. So you're going to score a three. Um, the nice thing is you'll be amazed. The Putting the book together actually goes by pretty quickly. What takes a while is the decorating of the book. Um, what's fun is I don't usually make my books till I really look at the paper line. After I look at the paper line and get a feel for what, you know, the papers really do tell stories. And that's when I start to make my books and my flaps. That's why I don't have the actual patterns. Okay, let's put this one at the top. Again, it's a little bit off. So I'm going to just make sure I have one layer there and cut that little edge off. Okay, now make sure it's down good and tight. And again, magnet, magnet here. Make sure it's not too close to the top. And then a magnet in the middle. And then you've got your the back of page number two. Okay, page number three. Page number three is actually extremely simple. We have a belly band. Um, you can put your belly bands down first, and we are going to, and then you'll just do your paper and slide it in. And then there is a small book that goes with it. So the book, the book is going to be eight and a half half inches long by four and a half inches wide. So you will need to cut a new strip of paper for that. And the belly band is eight by is excuse me two by seven. So cutter, and you should have a couple. Oh, actually, that's the one. So I'm just going to rip that. You should have a couple of the half sheets. If not, go ahead and cut one. And we're going to go ahead and cut cut it at seven by two. I said this had a nice wide band and the reason being I wanted to make sure to decorate it. Okay. Each end I'm going to score half an inch. Fold them over. Now one thing I do before I put this down I check my page, make sure, see how it's a little bit short there? I don't want it to be a little bit short. That does happen. So let me cut it again. Let's see. That's really odd. So let's, it had to have been in my scoring. So let's go with two inches. All right, let's try this again. I'm going to score at six and a half. If it's off this time, I'm going to measure my page. That means I'm off somewhere. Or I scored that one off a little bit. Okay, had to have been in the scoring. No, nope, for some reason this is a little bit short. Okay, we're going to put those aside. That doesn't usually happen. So I'm going to cut another piece that I already have. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to make sure I'm getting it right 
on that seven, maybe just an eighth of an inch over, and let's see what happens. I'm kind of a stickler. I hate when my pages are off. Okay, let me go ahead and score it half, and score it half again. Sorry, I know it's noisy when I get the scoreboard out. That's better. That's much better. Had to have been, I did cut it just a tiny bit shorter. Okay. Three eighths of an inch. See how nice it fits in there? I love it. There's no gooey mess. There's, I use it even when I map the pages. Okay. Now, this is kind of hit and miss. You can measure if you want it exactly in the middle. I don't measure. And I'm just going to go ahead and eyeball it. And let's bring this one down. And again, of course, your paper to go where you want. Sorry, I've got to pick up my little tool there. Okay, now let's make our little page. So you will have to cut another piece of paper unless you have another one of these that was, you know, left over. And I'm going to go ahead and just remeasure our book for safety. If I can find where I put our book. Okay, it's eight and a half by four and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my 12 inch piece since this was the one my cutter kind of chewed up by eight and a half. Forward. And we're going to score that right at four. 4.25 for half. Just fold that over. And then your book will sit nicely in your belly band and you'll be ready to decorate. Okay. So on our back page of our belly band, we have nothing. If you remember in the Mother Goose, I took two of the cutouts from the paper line right here and I just I just made a little pocket with them okay and then I used a sticker for the tab to kind of hold that in so you can um, make you can leave this page plain or you can make another little pocket such as I did okay so that one is done we're done with three pages see how quickly it goes our next page, we're going to have this little flap. Now, again, on this flap, this is not made. It, I just took the designer paper, the design, and I cut it where I wanted it, and then I glued it on these three edges to make the pocket. So it can be plain. You can put another small belly band to put these through, or you can make the little pocket such as I did. So let's go ahead. This one. It's four inches by four and a half. So we, we know we need a four, four and a half by four inch. Let me make sure our demo here, four inches, yep, by five and a half. Um, the books, my books never will be the same twice. That's what's nice about them being homemade. Um, so when you get your book, you might see they're off a little bit because I'm off a little bit sometimes. So five and a half. And yes, I have to measure and measure and measure because I get my brain thinking about decorating the page instead of just making it. And then I lose track of my measurements. Okay, so five and a half, we're gonna measure. I mean, we're going to score at four and a half. I just broke off another finger now. Okay, so let's fold that down. Let's 
pour tape on that flap edge. Or glue, whichever you're using. And let's go ahead and grab another page. Again, make sure we have each side and then we're going to go ahead and attach your flap to about the middle of the page. Okay. Um, on the mother goose, once again, this, this pocket was made using the paper collection and it was just glued on three sides. So you don't have to worry about making a pocket. You once again can leave it plain. Um, it does have a magnet. So if you're going to do a magnet closure, put one here and one here. Okay. Backside. See how quick it goes? It's amazing. The backside has these two pockets. Now I'm going to make these two pockets, but we can't put them on until after you put your paper on. But we'll go ahead and make these pockets. And these pockets actually, we know the page is um, six inches, so they're going to be three inches wide by four inches by three and a half inches. So we're going to have to cut it four and a half inches by four. And we need two of those. Now you have lots of these little scraps and you should have plenty. So let's go with four and a half. Perfect. By uh, four. No, nope, that's not going to make it. Here we go. So let's go four. Let's choose this scrap. And let me just double here real quick. Yeah, by two and a half is correct. Okay, and just throw that piece away. So four and a half by four. And I'm just going to throw those two little pieces away. Make sure everything's the right. Okay, now for these pockets, we're only going to um, score on three edges. So we have three and a half, four, three and a half. So when you fold your pocket, just make sure it only measures three inches because it the page has got it has two pockets and so we only have six inches to work with. So let's go one half, one half, a half, and let's fold. Okay, same thing. Your score tape is going to just go on this one, let me double check some measurements for, um, okay, I thought I did that. These are going to be half inch too long. So I'm gonna fold that up. I gave you the wrong, you only need to cut this four inches long, not four and a half. So not four inches long, not four and a half inches long, four inches long. So basically, you're going to cut a four by four sheet of paper. So I'm just going to take that half inch off. And it probably wouldn't matter. It's just I don't want them too long or it's too hard to get to the pockets. Oh, I'm doing really good here today. So let me go ahead and cut another pocket. Sorry. And if we weren't so far in the video, I'd go ahead and... and stop it. So I am going to go ahead and stop it. I'm going to fix this pocket and I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. I got it figured out. So, sorry about that. Let's go with four and a half 
This is the second pocket. Okay, I'm remaking the second one since I cut the first one wrong. Four and a half by four. Okay. Sometimes I get going to talking and I get all messed up. So let's go ahead and rescore half. Half and half. Okay. And we're going to fold these over. And I, like I said, I do not know what happened on that last pocket. So what we're going to do is we're going to make just two more of these since I royally messed that up. So pocket number two. We want them to be the exact same size. So let's go ahead and cut four and a half. by four and I'm not sure what's wrong with this new blade Must be, I'm not pushing hard enough okay four and a half by four four and a half uh, four inch side I guess I did put that back inside let's go with one half one half and one half all right we'll get it right here Go ahead and fold up those sides and fold it together. They are the same height. Yay. Sorry. Sometimes I do get off. Now, like uh, we did before, if you're doing glue, don't put it down yet. And since I, I'm using the score tape, I'm going to go ahead and score tape all three of my edges. Okay, so we've got that one and let's do this one. And what's fun, once you make a couple of these pockets, you'll see how easy they are and you can just, you'll pop them on all your pages. You can do one, you can do two. Um, makes a nice little added element to your page. Okay, let's get that all down, turn it over, let's go ahead and cut and cut. Now, on my pages pockets like this, I take my scissors and I just barely, okay, just barely clip that top edge off so that it has kind of an angle to it, okay. And then let's do this one, again at an angle and turn your page at an angle and turn your page and then let's go ahead and do this one at just barely and just barely okay clean up my mess now we are not going to put this down well I'm not because this is a page that needs to be decorated first you need to put down your paper okay make sure you um, do your decorated paper and then you'll either glue or you'll take the tape off and you will put these down side by side and they will fit just like that. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to set these aside and we'll put those on after we decorate our page. Okay, so now our next page is the top and flap and the bottom again this is a three inch page a six inch page so we only have three inches on each side to work with and um, let me go back here really quick and get i want to get our pages back together because we've done did that one and the back side of this one is our pocket page so now we're on this one Okay, so we've got page one, the back of page one, page two, the back of page two, and I have page three, and the back of page three was our, our blank page, and there we go. Here's page four, four, and the back of page four is where these pockets will go. 
Okay. Sometimes I'll even stick them inside of here so I don't lose them while I'm working. As you can see, it's easy to do. Now, this page, we're going to have the flap that comes up and the flap that comes down. So we know our pages are six inches, so we're going to need a six by six. And I am going to have to cut it. So I'm going to take one of my 12 by 12 sheets and I'm going to cut it at six. Okay, now we want them on each side. So actually cut it just an eighth of an inch short. So you're going to, let me get it here. You're going to take it just to that little tiny mark on your cutter just before the six. Okay. Then you're going to turn it around and we need two pieces that are three, but we're going to once again, let me get this up here. I want to bring down the camera. You're going to put it right on that last little eighth of a mark before the three inches. If you do not, your flaps will be too wide and they will hit each other when you open and close them. So again, let's get it right on that three eighths because we do want just a hair of a mark. My cutter is cutting. I'm not getting it on here straight. So let me try this again. Okay, let's not use that one. I do believe it was off. And let's cut another one. So basically you have what two and seven eighths by um, probably about five and seven eighths to go on your sheet. I'm sorry, I keep losing my my laptop keeps timing out and then I can't see if I'm in focus or not. Forward. Okay, on our six inch side. Should be just a hair shorter than six. Go ahead and score it at five. It won't be a full inch, but that's okay. We just don't want our flaps to be the full length of the page. Go ahead and fold that down. Wow. I'm really screwing up here. Good, you can see the mistake. Let's put those aside. I didn't account for the seven inches. I mean the one inch. So grab your paper again. We need seven inches. Hair short of seven inches. So see, it's good that you see the mistakes. Okay, now we have this page. Let's go ahead and cut it. Same dimensions, but we need to add that inch on. Remember, cut it two and seven eighths, just a hair short. Um, there we go. Sorry about that. But if I stop the tape, and I can't really start over again because this is my second one and I'm not going to be making a third one. I have lots of projects in my head I've got to get working on. And once you start making these, you'll be doing the same thing. You'll be like, oh, I've got to do this. I want to make this next. I want pockets here. I want pockets there. I love pockets and flaps. I think they're fun and interesting and they really add a lot to your album. So now as you can see, that is right. And this will sit next right next to it. You will have a little tiny gap in between and that's exactly what you want. Yay, we did it. Okay, three-eighths of an inch tape. One right next to your score and right one at the top. Again, if you've got a little tape over, just go ahead and give it a little cut off. Um, if you're using glue, go ahead and get your glue down just on one. Okay, I'm still gonna yeah give that a clip. Make sure. 
Okay, so our first flap then is going to open up. So this one's going to go at the top. Again, I turn my pages a uh, couple reasons. I like to make sure I have them where they belong. And I have to also make sure that I'm putting it on the right side. But if you happen to put it on the wrong side, that's okay. Your flaps will just go the opposite direction. And your page is not ruined. Okay, so we got this one down. And if you're using magnets, this is the time to get your magnet on. Now I'm going to show you something. Even though we cut it just a hair short, that bugs me. Okay, I'm the type I just, I don't like, I don't like it to hang over. So I am going to use my cutter and I'm just going to barely take that edge off. See how much nicer? I just... I don't like that. You, it may not bother, and that's okay. If you, if it doesn't bother you, just go ahead and leave that. Don't forget, magnet closures go down. The reason I usually do my magnet closures right now is if I don't, I will forget them. And then it's no fun tearing up paper to get a closure down. Okay. Now see how nice we have that little bit of an opening there so that our pages can go freely. And you'll be able to decorate the front. I put the little emblem of Mother Goose there. Let me show you. And you can see just a hair of the paper sneaking through. See how the paper shows through a little bit. But I put Mother Goose and cut her in half. And then it just opens like that. Now, on the inside okay, of this flap, I know we're sideways. Um, again, I just cut a piece of the pattern paper glued it on each side, and then I just made the little stick looking um, tag. And one thing I like about these is you can actually take them out and use them for bookmarks. So you can put them in your album, other places, bookmark in real books, and um, they're a lot of fun. So there's your page. Now our next page is just, it's a pocket page, okay? And the pocket page is going to be seven inches by four and a half. So let's go ahead, turn this over, because the pocket page is just going to go here on the back. You will need your cutter. And you might even have a few scraps of paper left, which I do. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it at seven. You may not have as many as I have left because of the little boo-boos I've made. And that's okay. If you don't, then go ahead and just um, cut another piece because you will use it. And then we want it to four and a half. Okay. So measurements are seven inches wide. I mean, seven inches long, four and a half wide. Scoreboard. Now on this pocket, you know what? I didn't uh, score. I didn't score it at the top. I didn't uh, make it closed here. You know what? You don't have to. It's just preference. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. Um, sometimes I forget, and then you can't really go back. So I'm going to go ahead and stay consistent. And I'm not going to do the top. So you can also see how pockets can be done um, without doing that. And you can use your pattern paper if you're using a pattern paper that doesn't crack when you fold it. Some of these pattern papers, um, because of the inks and dyes and that they use, they do crack. So I would not advise you making a pocket unless you take a scrap piece of paper first. Fold it and make sure that it does not crack when you fold it. So let's go ahead. And you know what? It doesn't matter on a three-sided pocket which side because you're going to just fold however the tape needs to go. Okay. Let's just get our tape down. And this will be folding backwards. So scissors. And let's get those corners cut. I like to put the tape down because I do like to cut it off. 
Now you're going to take your uh, top piece again and you're just going to barely miter that just a little bit. Okay. Turn her over. Let's flatten that down just a hair more. Uh, craft card stock is nice and firm, so it does take a little more manipulating. And let's go ahead and fold that over. And the same thing here. Now, one thing I forgot to show you, and I do do this. Um, I usually check my pocket first just to double check because as you can see I tend to mistake on some measurements and like I said it's because it's in my head I don't write them down and I probably should but I don't like each one I don't like my books to always be the same I like them to be different each time I like I like the you know to vary them so there's your pocket and you'll just do your paper and then your tag. So again, you know that you have a six inch sheet and you might even have a scrap that fits perfect. If you don't, just take one that fits closest so you're not wasting your paper. And I am just going to cut a quarter of an inch off the six inch side and that should do it because I do want a bigger pocket. I mean, bigger mat in this pocket. So there you go. And that just fits in there perfect. So there we have another page. And um, it's backwards. It's hard. And say, now you saw me do the major mistake of all. I put it on the wrong side, but I didn't. There we go. Okay. Now let's move on to this fun page. This is the page that has the little booklet. Okay, so we're going to do the little booklet and we're going to do the little uh, pop-up. Very simple. Measurements, very important. So what I'm going to do is use this book that I've already completed and to show you, um, you, again, if you're using magnet closures, this is when you want to put them down. Now on this, this piece, let me make sure I'm in camera. I've got to get my time to look at my computer and see why it keeps timing out on the picture so on this one I actually have a magnet on this side and I have a magnet on this side because I just didn't want it flapping around you can use ribbons and then I have a magnet on the inside of here and I actually have one here but I turned the magnets upside down so I didn't waste them you can just play with your magnets and you'll know and because I was going through so many thicknesses of paper. So what we're gonna do is measure the first one. So the first one, our first flap is going to be five, five by five. And I believe I do have some of those scraps left. I sure do. So I'm just gonna get my cutter and I'm going to cut the first one five by five. You can throw those away. Perfect. Now, my next one, okay, my small flap here is the finish size is three and a half by five. Nope, this one, is, yes, it's three and a half by five. They are the same width, uh, same height. So we're going to cut it four and a half by five. Again, you should have some of the scraps left. Um, I mentioned earlier in the video, that's what I love about this album. And I try to make all my albums this way. When I cut the paper and you have those little four by fives and five by six, I like to use those up so that I'm not cutting a lot of my other paper. Okay, let's go ahead and let's score this one inch. To three and a half, and then our five by five, we're going to score it at four. Okay, fold these away, and on the three and a half, finish three and a half by four and a half. So, first thing I'm going to do is on this one, I'm going to put my score tape.
and also on my five by five, which is the finished three and a half by five. And let's cut off some of that score tape. Okay. Now on your smaller three and a half by five and a half flap. Okay, you've got a flap to your right, fold it under. This one, smaller finish size that's th going to be three and a half when it's finished. Go ahead and put your glue or your tape on. And just put that on top. So you have your book. Okay. Now grab your page, our last page. See how quickly this goes? Okay. Add your glue or take off your score tape. And again, you've got your opening to this, this your hinge system and then the opposite. So just eyeball it, or if you want perfection, just go ahead and measure it. I, like I said, I don't. And there is your little book. How fun is that, huh? Now, let's do the little top piece. So we, our little top piece is going to be three inches by three inches finished. So we're going to do three by four. We need two little pieces that are three by four. And I know we've got lots of scraps. So we're going to, in fact, I have the scraps from when I did the flaps wrong. So perfect. What I'm going to do, I already have a one inch flap, but I'm going to, but you want to cut it four inches by three inches. Oh, you know what? We can't use these. I take that back. Those were the ones we cut two and seven eighths. So let me start over. So four. by three. Okay, we need two of those. Let's see. Oh, that one's a hair short. I like to always go through my scraps. Okay, four by three. Once again, scoreboard. Okay, on the four inch side, four inch side, go ahead and score at three. And again at three. Okay, hold your flaps under. And score tape or glue, whichever you prefer. But don't, if you're gluing, don't glue both sides yet. You'll have a disaster. You'll have sticky glue everywhere and you won't be ready to put it down onto your book. Okay. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to put it down just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and, now if you're doing glue, go ahead and glue this one. Turn this so that the score tape is away from you. Sorry, I'm there we go. And then let's go ahead at the bottom. Adhere that flap. Just the hair off there. Okay. Now let's go ahead and bring our book back. So we're going to want to put it at the top. Book here. I, like I mentioned earlier, I turn mine to be towards me. And I just eyeball it. And there you have the little flap it goes this way. Now you can put it here and have it come down or you can put it at the top. 
choice is yours. And then you've got your little your little book. Love it. It tells the story. Okay, our back page. Now this is fun. This was a I like making these. I think they're a lot of fun. And once again, I am not going to adhere it down because I'm going to put the score tape on it. Because if you want a ribbon closure on here, magnets. Um, I do have a magnet. I even have a large one, and it just I don't know, it didn't seem firm enough. And I I felt the page needed something else. So this will lift up and down and over and over. Okay, so we will go ahead and get this made. Now, after I make this, we have completed all of our pages. So I am going to uh, pause the video while I get everything ready to make our cover. Okay, so we're going to need, and I have this piece here. We're going to need, for the base, you're going to need one four by four. Let me see if this piece will work. No. I'll get into my straps over here. Okay. I'm going to do one more thing on measurement really quick. Three and four by four. Yes. We are doing four by four. These can be made as big or as small as you'd like, but we need to start with a base, and our base is going to be the four by, no, on this book, it's three by three, sorry. My Christmas one, I did a four by four. So let's do three by three. Okay, three by three for for the base. You just need a flat piece like this. Now we need four pieces that are four by three. And these might even match up. Nope. By three, there's two. Another four by three. If it was six inches, we'd have a perfect match. So I need one more that is four by three. This wasn't quite a six inch piece. Okay, let's go ahead and get our scoreboard. We have four of the four by threes. Put them together, make sure everything's right, and we're going to score these at three. Okay, second one, our third one, and our fourth one. Again, I do the one inch score. I had done one a uh, half inch before, and I've also had it lift and pull away, and it I like the one inch because when I am covering with paper, I'm, I know my one inch isn't going to be seen. It will be completely covered. Okay, now on these, I'm gonna go ahead and I am using my side of my bone folder. I need to really soften that, that up so that, that will break the fibers. Now this is going to go, as you see, with the flap on the back. So we're going to put on the inside of each one our score tape. And we're going to put score tape at the edge and right at the bottom. Okay, right next to that score line, but not, not touching it. And again, if you're using glue, don't put your glue on yet. You'll put your glue on when I come to the part where I say you can take off the tape. Okay. Get that all 
down and down. Okay, let's go ahead and take off the score tape. It's not bad, it's just a little bit, so I'm going to push that on. Take your 3x3, three three, it doesn't matter which side. Now line it up, let me get it right here, line it up. Okay, this looks a little off. And I, this is a new cutter, and I don't know what I'm, I'm doing. Sometimes it's, the paper tends to slide. So I'm just going to cut those edges off. Because this, this has to be per. it has to be perfect. It has to match. So go ahead and line it up to the bottom. And as you're holding it, make sure everything is up. Go ahead and push down that flap. So see, now you have the flap. If it's hanging over a little, it's probably okay. It's just me. I'm that way. Okay, let's go ahead and take score tape off. Add your glue. Okay, make sure you're turning this around. Okay, once again, let's just get it up there. Push that down. Okay, let's take out the score tape. Make sure you turn it around again. And we have one more. So you can see how that's taking shape. And one more time. So we're lined up. And there you have your little box. Now you can decide how you're going to fold things. Okay, it can go that way. There's no right way. There's no wrong way. Um, it's just up to you. Usually I go in, in, there, and there. Okay, what I'm going to do is show you how I put it on. Now, if you're going to glue it, make sure um, you do not put this down on the back of here. Once again, your page has to be decorated. You have to put down your... Um, you have to put down your, your decorated paper, your pattern paper, then you can add this on either glue. I'm going to go ahead and score tape it, and that way you can just pull off the score tape. So I, you'll see, I just put a line here. I just go around the perimeter, and if I'm doing ribbon, the score tape is fantastic. It even holds your ribbon down. So I put it here, and then I would take here, I've got some pearls. I'll show you with pearls. I would take my pearls or my ribbon on the back, adhere it down, and then bring this up. Okay? And that's how simple that is. Now, this, this will just go right here on your book. Then I have the flower and I have the other. So, I have, I have the um, nine picture fold out and the two pockets that I'm going to set aside. And you'll put those on your page after you put down your pattern paper. So we have, let just put this book away. Now we have all six of our pages completed. Yay, see how quick that goes? It's really, it's really quite simple. And actually this goes this way. So now what we need to do is we need to do our covers. So our cover on mine, I have the three, basic gray large magnets that go right here and then they'll you know of course go here so that they can adhere um, it makes for a nice closure and it makes so your book can expand but it doesn't push it open um, we need to cut five pieces of chipboard 
we're going to cut a six, two six and a half by six and a half inch pieces, six and a half by three, and we, excuse me, need two. These two pieces are two. I have the hiccups. I apologize. Two and a half by six and a half. So let me go ahead and get everything put to the side. And before we make that, though, we're going to make our spine or our hinge system. So what I do, get your cutters out. I thought so I don't lose them. You'll need another six and a half by, I mean, a 12 by 12 inch piece of paper. So for our hinge system, we're going to need to cut a piece of paper. Our pages are six by six. So I'm going to cut my paper five and seven eighths for the whip. Okay. I'm going to cut five and seven eighths just to make it easier to work with. I'm going to cut it at 10. Okay, five and seven eighths by 10 inches. Scoreboard. Put our score tape up. Okay, we're going to start our score mark. Let me get it right on there. We're going to start our score mark at one and a fourth. Okay. And then one and a half. I like to have a quarter inch right there. Now we're going to score every half inch at two, two and a half. Now we're going to score at a quarter. So it goes half, half, quarter. Okay. So we're going to score again at half, which is three and two, three point two five. It's going to be that first black. And we're going to score it again another half. Three and three fourths, and then we're going to score it at four. Do you see how we have those half inch? Those are going to be what our pages sit on. So we've just scored it at four. We need a, we need to go at four and a half. We need to go to five, and five and a quarter. Then we're going to go five and three quarters, six and a quarter and six and a half. So we have, I can't see today, one, two, three, four hinges so far. So we need seven, seven and a half, and seven and three quarters. And we're going to go with eight and a quarter. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So eight and a quarter, because we need six of those, eight, and three quarters and nine. That's where we're going to end. Okay, now everything I'm showing you is basically how I do it. You may watch other videos and there's other ways to do it because there's no right, there's no wrong. Now what I do is I go to my first one half inch. Okay, see this first half inch and what I've done let me get my screen back up so I can see if I'm okay. What I have done is I brought those two together. So just bring those together, and there's your quarter inch. Just fold it and then fold it back. Okay, go to your next half inch. So we've got quarter, half, quarter, and we have half again. So now I'll put the paper down and I go ahead and I fold it and I fold it back and over onto that quarter inch just to kind of break up the paper and make it easier. Let's go. Now, if you're going to do an album and maybe you only want five pages in there, that's fine. You can do your, your scoring so you have one, two, three, four, five hinges and you'll want to stop. Don't go on making six. Otherwise, it'll look funny in your book. You'll have an extra hinge there. And you don't want that. Okay, so this last one, again, make sure it's straight. We have that quarter inch. And like I said, with this craft card stock, it's a little bit tighter. And that's why I like to work with it. If you're using a thinner paper, you're going to have to be very careful. Okay, let's turn it over. See how we have an accordion-like fold? 
I take my 3 eighths of an inch score tape and my half inch. We're going to start with the half inch. So I'm going to take the half inch and I'm going to put it on all my quarter inch score marks. Okay. The reason I do that, it's, it helps me just kind of keep track of where and where things where the other tape goes. You can do this after. It's not as easy because then you have all your folds in. And we have one more quarter inch right here at the bottom. Okay. Now I take my three eighths of an inch and I'm going, it doesn't matter. You can do it here or you can do it here. Just do not get it on that fold mark. Just put it right at the score mark. And you're going to do it on the next one. And the next one. If you're using glue, oh, I didn't mention, if you're doing glue, you're going to have to do each one, you know, individually. And do not put glue here yet. That's why I like score tape. I can get everything ready and basically just set it aside. Now I can tell I have score tape hanging over the edge. So let's go ahead and get that cut off and cleaned up. My scissors cut off. Getting a little gummy there. Okay. Now. Make sure it's all down good and tight. Okay, let's start with our three eighths of an inch. I'm going to go ahead and take that off. I'm going to remove all my three eighths of an inch. Okay, now you want to bring have tape here and then no tape there but you want to bring it together okay and just fold this back see how your quarter inches are coming together then let's just fold it and fold back at the same time okay now let's fold it up so you can kind of see now how it's taking shape And you'll start to notice that maybe quarter inch tape isn't like nice and straight, but you know, it's okay. Okay, let's turn this over. Uh, play with your flaps. Just kind of work them. Soften them up, those fibers, and hold it down. Really get them moving. Now we have the quarter inch inches right here. They can be just a hair tricky. So you want to get those down. And that's one thing I want to look for, some tape here. Okay, and then let's get this side down. Um, some of the crafters will take and use tie back, you know, like the envelopes from the post office on their spines. I don't. I don't feel that it's any stronger, and I've made tons of albums. And I've never had one of them come apart. It's totally, totally up to you. I also will take, um, let me show you. You can take your chipboard and you can put it inside of, you can put it on top of there and then fold these over to make it very, very strong if you're worried about it coming apart. And I have done that, especially on larger albums, but my 8x8 eight eight albums. I do put chipboard on top of here because 8x8 eight eight albums are heavy. And if you're doing glue, go ahead and get your glue all on those cut quarter gussets. Now you want to make sure that you fold okay, that one quarter inch. 
because you need that quarter inch there for your page. Okay, so you want to fold that down. Now on this one, because it's going to come over, you do need a piece of tape. And we're going to put a piece of tape right on this edge. Now, to be honest with you, I probably should have cut that an extra half inch. So go ahead and, and just, when you do it, cut it at um, ten and a half so it will overlap a little bit more. It doesn't matter. It's kind of preference. I prefer it to lap, overlap. Okay, now here's our hinges. So you can see how our pages now are going to start coming together. So when we are ready to do the rest of our book, we're going to put our pages on and they will fit snugly but nicely on our hinge. Okay? For our hinges, one quarter inch score tape. If you're going to be gluing your pages down, don't do this step. Otherwise, we're going to take our score tape. Like I said, I only use glue when I'm making pockets out of the pattern paper. I don't like glue. It wrinkles my pages, even if I'm very careful and just use a tiny bit. And definitely don't use glue sticks. Glue sticks will not hold this book. Um, even if you're going to use your glue sticks for your pattern paper to mat your pages, it's not going to hold. They get just too much wear and tear. And you do. You want to be able to put these books out for people to see and give as gifts. And our last one. And when putting the tape on, make sure it's in the middle. You don't want it at the bottom. So let's put it in the middle. And I apologize, you probably can hear my older children in the background. Okay, just get that tape down tight. Okay, there's your hinge system. And let's go ahead and put that off to the side. And I'll be back and we'll make our cover.